undoubtedly the best way to reduce the temperature and noise from a graphics card is to liquid cool it. This way, even something as power hungry as an RTX 2080 Ti can run quietly under full load, given that there's enough radiator volume. However, there is another way that you can significantly improve the thermal and noise performance of your graphics card, and that's with a little mod called GPU deshrouding. As it suggests, it involves removing the stock shroud and fans from your graphics card and then pairing that bare heatsink with some high performance fans. So that's exactly what we're taking a look at today. And this doesn't work for every graphics card and case out there. It does need to be quite specific, but when it does work, the results are seriously, seriously impressive. So let's take a look at what you need to know. So some of you might remember one of my previous personal rigs over two years ago in the N-Case M1, which uses a very similar setup to what we're taking a look at today. That build used a GTX 1080 Ti with the Arctic Accelero 3 aftermarket GPU cooler paired with some 120mm fans from EK. And the performance improvement over the stock EVGA SC2 cooler was night and day. At the same fan speeds, we saw around a 15 degree C improvement for GPU thermals, which is absolutely massive. However, between then and now, there was a big shift in graphics card cooling design, with pretty much all of the major graphics card manufacturers getting really comfortable with two and a half slot and even triple slot coolers. In fact, the majority of RX 5700 XT graphics card models on the market are above two slots in thickness. And overall, this has been a smart move in my opinion. Larger heat sinks allow for more effective cooling, and as most users have mid-tower cases, clearance usually isn't a problem. So I originally planned for this card to be our test subject, the triple slot XC Ultra RTX 2080 Ti from EVGA. Beefy cooler designs like this are highly recommended for power heavy GPUs like the 2080 Ti, as with two slot coolers, you're commonly looking at temperatures north of 80 degrees C, along with a loud fan speed. Also, a bit of a side note, I'm definitely expecting some of the upcoming RTX 3000 graphics cards to use two and a half slot and three slot coolers like this. So this upcoming mod should be very relevant for those graphics cards as well. So removing the shroud from the XC Ultra, we can see that this card isn't actually compatible for what we wanna do with it. Ideally with this mod, you'll be able to sit two 120 mil fans directly against the heatsink, but here there are clearly brackets in the way. These are the brackets that secure the shroud and fans to the heatsink, and it seems like it's impossible to remove them without invasive force. Now, if you really want to commit to this mod, you could, of course, just use a Dremel to remove and cut off these metal brackets, but that's something that I'll be passing on for now. As an alternative, we'll be using this card right here, a 2.5 slot Asus Strix, in this case, an RX 5700. I know it's a measly card for a GPU mod like this, but we'll still be able to measure how much of an improvement there is with deshrouding. Now, this card actually has a major design flaw. The exact one that Hardware Unbox brought up with the Strix 5700 XT quite a while ago, where the mounting pressure between the heatsink and the PCB is nowhere near enough. So although this is a different card on paper, it looks like it uses the exact same cooler and sure enough has the same mounting pressure defect. The main problem are these two screws here, which are just way too long as you can clearly see. And I was able to easily fix this by replacing these screws with two shorter ones that I actually stole from the shroud. With those two shorter screws in place, you shouldn't have any mounting issues. Deshrouding the card itself is fairly easy. And as always, I'd recommend investing in a small toolkit to avoid any damage, I'll link the one that I'm using down below. There are three small screws at the back of the card, another three just behind the fans, and that'll be enough to remove the shroud itself. Next up are the three fans which have four screws each. You'll need to carefully rotate the fan blades until they're fully accessible and then slowly unscrew each one. At this point, you can unplug the fan cable and the lighting cable to reveal your deshrouded GPU. As you can see though, we kind of have the same problem as with the EVGA XC Ultra where these metal tabs extending from the heatsink are getting in the way. Unfortunately, you will have to flatten a couple of these metal tabs so 
that you can mount the fans underneath them. Otherwise, I found installing the card pretty much to be impossible. Personally, I'd rather not go and pry the original heatsink, but luckily we can still use the stock cooler afterwards with no issues. Now the test system that I built here is one of the more popular kind of configurations that you'll see this graphics card deshrouding being used because the clearance underneath the graphics card is pretty much perfect. The NKS M1 supports regular thickness 120mm fans underneath a two slot graphics card. And it just so happens that when we deshroud the two and a half slot Strix here, that we reduce the thickness to exactly two slots. So that means that we get this setup here where the heatsink is sitting directly on top of those 120mm fans. This setup is very specific and very rare, and I guess it's most useful for the end case M1, but there are other cases out there which can utilize this setup. For example, the Fractal Design Node 202. So like I said, this is probably the most common setup where you'll see this mod being used inside the end case M1. We've also got the Noctua C14S cooler in there, cooling a 10600K, and we've got the power supply mounted directly at the front. And one last thing before we jump into the results, most of the ROG Strix cards that I've seen do actually have onboard four pin fan headers, which will fit your regular case fans. Of course though, since we're working with an AMD GPU, which regularly have fan control issues, these fan headers just don't work at all on this card. So in that case, you'll need to use a mini four pin to regular four pin adapter. All right, so now the results, and they really are super impressive. Firstly, let's break down this graph a little so you understand exactly what we're looking at here. The first test that I ran was with the stock GPU just installed regularly into the case. Then we have two tests with the deshrouded GPU at the same RPM to see whether intake or exhaust is better, and then a noise normalized test versus stock. Then on the right, we have the noise reading for each test 30 centimeters from the case. The first chart looks at GPU temperature, and even just at first glance, you can see a huge thermal improvement with deshrouding. Running the fans as exhaust will give you a slight thermal improvement versus intake, but is significantly quieter due to less turbulence against the bottom panel and fan blades. So at an equal noise level to the stock fans, 40.7 dBA, we see a massive 26 degrees C improvement in temperature for the GPU, giving us thermal performance that you'd honestly expect from water cooling. The GPU hotspot temperature doesn't see as much of an improvement as some of you might expect, but still a 12 degree reduction at the same noise level is nothing to disregard. The memory hotspot temperature, however, sees a 20 degree C improvement over stock at the same noise level, and even at much quieter noise levels can still give you over a 10 degree better result. Lastly, we have the VRM, the section of the PCB which is responsible for the power delivery of the card, and again we see the type of results that you'd expect from liquid cooling. Now, the point of this mod isn't really to run your GPU and its surrounding components under 50 degrees C, but it's more so to show how much quieter you could potentially make your gaming system. With this configuration here, there's not much benefit of running your fans beyond 1200 RPM, and at that point, given that you're using using quiet fans, you've got near silent gaming performance. So if you do have a compatible graphics card and case, this deshrouding mod is absolutely worth doing. The performance gains are simply insane. The whole deshrouding process, at least for the Strix cards here, are relatively unobtrusive and only take a few minutes. Even performance aside, I think it's a great looking mod as well and really makes your system look like a cohesive and deliberate unit. The hardest part for this mod though is finding the compatible hardware for it. As we saw some cards just don't work here unless you're willing to start chopping them up. So although the usefulness of this mod feels quite narrow because it'll only work for a handful of cases and graphics cards, definitely consider a setup like this for your next build. So if you're interested in running a setup like this, I will leave some known compatible graphics cards listed down below in the description. And if you already have a deshrouded setup like this, feel free to share that down below as well. As always guys, a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.